impossible if he's dead. 2,000 years of revenge, vendetta, murder. Welcome to Beirut. Christians on one side, Muslims on the other, Jack Daniels in the middle. Welcome to Beirut. Have you been to Beirut? I have never been to Beirut. It seems like it's a bad place to go to Beirut. If you add another 700 times of people saying Beirut, that's still off of how many times did they, they say it in like, this movie. Did they say it like Beirut? <laughs> or Beirut? The, the dude, Dean Norris, said it weird a couple times that he did say. So like, Beirut, Beirut. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not too concerned about that. We saw. If, if, if you can guess, I mean, we saw a movie called uh, Saudi Arabia. I yeah. mean, Sergeant Stubby. Lebanon. <laughs> Wait, Beirut. Wait, what? We saw Beirut. We did see Beirut. <laughs> Beirut is what we saw. Beirut, you a good time. Yeah. That doesn't really work. I'm sorry. Have we a good Beirut. It. This movie, um. Yeah, why don't, why don't you Honestly, just uh, take us Honestly, it was off? it was a lot. It was better than Red Sparrow, but it was a lot like it in a lot of departments. Um, the violence wasn't nearly as cool, not as cool. wasn't nearly as impactful. There was little bits of romance, little jokes sprinkled in here or there. Like, you guys are in the middle of a civil war torn country, and you're trying to. Also, the movie didn't really have a very deep plot. The whole idea of the movie is his old friend gets kidnapped in Beirut and he has to go get him. Go make a deal for him. It, this movie would have been so much more interesting if it was the story about the Carter. The guy who was hostage. Mm. He's running spies. You know, he's doing cool stuff. No teeth. Totally, I don't know, all over the place. Yeah, um... I, I definitely wouldn't say that this is better than Red Sparrow. I would, okay. I would just put that the out cheesiness there. and the tropes got to you. Um, this is honestly the the worst experience I've had in the theater since seeing the post. Um, the people? No, no, not nothing to do with the people at all. Uh, the I was, movie? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I am um, completely fucking hated this movie. Okay. Um, with, with a fiery passion. Like I think it's fucking terrible. Like straight up garbage. What were your problems? Well, first of all, and, and this may be a, a subjective thing, but the way this movie is shot... Terribly. Oh, my God. There was a couple moments where it would cut from, like, good, crisp 4K, whatever, HD, and then it go right cut, hard cut, right to the next shot, and it's, like, super grainy, super dark, super, like, washed Well, those were, those out. were archival shots of, like, Beirut, like, in the no, past. No, there was... A, had to be. No, there was a couple... There was at least one shot where Roseman Pike, he's in Carter's apartment yeah. looking for the notebook or the picture or whatever. She busts in the door, and then all of a sudden it becomes, like, taxi driver. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, at the beginning of the movie, I started noticing you could clearly see the lights uh, reflecting in John Hamm's eyes yeah. uh, behind him, which was really distracting. But um, I was having like complete anxiety like throughout this movie because yeah. um, there's so many close-ups. Yeah, there's it's just frantically edited a, a constantly. Netflix, a Netflix a TV original movie. series, TV movie, yeah, for sure. Um, but uh, so many close-ups, so many cuts. The editing is so all over the place. Like, they must have had, like, tone, 16 cameras running. Tone. It's, all over the fucking place, man. Like... I, I, I thought it was one note. I, I didn't really feel like it was totally all over the place. Well, I, I thought it was a total one note. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't agree. That. But, um... Yeah. It, it's just... It, it bothered me so much. Because I was, like, praying, can I please get a wide shot? Can we please just let these people talk and not cut and smash zoom and swirl around the fucking room when when everyone's talking there's so many setup shots yeah. for a person just saying one word and then cutting to another person sometimes there's not even any it's, setup shot oh it's it's complete chaos like the editing just they must have shot so much footage yeah. that they had no fucking clue of how to ed- edit this movie it's and uh, it's just horribly shot really. do you remember there was one scene in the beginning when he first Wakes up, gets in the car with Lady, Lady Spy. They're driving, talking for a second. Well, if we can't do this, then that's not going to happen. 
cut. They're stepping outside the car. Oh. They're at some beach, yeah. and it's like a close-up of two trucks. Yeah, you can't yeah. really see anything. You don't know what's going on. I, you don't know where they are. Oh, I I was like in a daze yeah. watching this movie. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like it was just so like all over the place as far as just the way it's filmed. Like I can't I can't even like concentrate. Like what is going on? There it's a yeah. scene where people are sitting at a table talking and I'm like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just it's insane. That and, and I don't know who shot this and who edited it. I don't even I don't even give a fuck. Um I, I've seen the guy who directed he's made a couple of Brad movies. Anderson. Yeah, he did um the Lincoln Lawyer <laughs> with Matthew McConaughey, Never which is it. it's whatever, totally whatever movie. And he did this really shitty movie with uh, Ben Affleck and Justin Timberlake called Runner Runner. Um, which I remember garbage. when it came out. Fucking, I never, I remember the previews, garbage, but man. I decided, I declared the moment I saw the preview, yeah. I would never see it. Like I, I guess Ben Affleck like hired his editor to try to fix the movie, and who won an Oscar for Argo or whatever. And this is fucking terrible. Argo, fuck yourself on this movie and on Argo. Yeah. Oh my god! Like these these kind of fucking movies, man. It's it's just Argo. Well, it's, it's just the subject matter you're antennae. dealing with. You got something here. You you really get, you could do Did something. They? Really? Like, Beirut, what? civil war torn country, spy caught, try to get him released. They, they literally don't do any of it. Yeah. It's like I'm the whole time I'm watching this movie. Toothless, toothless. You know how we were talking about like techno babble bullshit and yeah. rampage, like. There's just babbling political bullshit in this movie where yeah. it's like you're just saying a bunch of shit, especially Rosamund Pike. It's usually all you have to really pay attention for is whether they say PLO, Israel, <laughs> or um, the Christian militia. Yeah, I, I mean, this this movie, I, I was just fucking miserable, man. Nah. I, I was just really miserable. Nothing? Not one Nothing. moment from Not, this you enjoyed? You know what? There's, there's one scene where John Hamm is playing cards, and I was like... Wow, the that purple lighting looks yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say <laughs> that was, too. I forgot about that. There That's was funny. another scene too when they're in this kind of like interrogation room, and I was like, "Oh, this is kind of bluish, greenish. I like this color." The but um, there's some in the lighting. interrogation room. Dean Norris and okay. Uh, one of the other guys, which Dean Norris, I love Dean Norris, but my he God, he was, he looked great. But anytime he opened his mouth, <laughs> was I was like, like, what? I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Oh, it's in just, the beginning, the Jesus. little boy, Kasim, Kassir, whatever his name was, yeah. he was speaking English, but they were subtitling. Oh yeah. Yeah. Way. No, I'm glad you brought that up. That was so weird. I mean, I mean very, I'm glad they did bizarre. it because you wouldn't have been able to hear, I understand. Could I could understand. That's why I thought it was so weird. I'm well, like, he wasn't, wait, why did they subtitle He it? wasn't speaking completely English. Like, there were times where he wasn't saying English. Yeah. Like, during it, he would mm -hmm. say, like, English for, like, 75% of it. And then for, like, one word, he would say something else. Inshallah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. If and, anyone can tell me what that means in the comments. Yeah. A thousand virgins. Okay, so I, I want to get into the script of this movie. Yeah, go ahead. This the the script for this fucking movie is trash. Yeah, like all of the dialogue is just garbage. All the everything that happens is oh, tropes. It's and cliches, cliche. Man. It's so fucking cliche. Like John Hamm being this alcoholic with a flat when he pours. When he grabs his flask for the first time, and I'm like, oh my god, he's going to put it in the coffee. Yeah. He puts it in the coffee like, sweet Jesus, we've seen this in like every fucking yeah. movie. The alcoholic, like, anti-hero who something shitty happened to. You know, it's like, who's the got to redeem himself. The fallen himself. hero. Yeah, say. he's got to redeem himself. He's, like you said, the fallen hero. who He couldn't save his wife. They, who way, dies they the way too early let him give up alcohol. He dumped the bottle oh, like awful. a third or half of the way movie through I'm like come uh, on this is third act stuff God. what are you guys blowing your load here for uh, it's just man fuck there was me. a bunch of times I can't remember specifically now where something was about to happen I was like ah come I would like see it coming and I was like I knew exactly what was going to happen and then the next yeah. 30 seconds of my time were wasted because it's like uh, alright you know I'll be honest like I I literally had no idea what was happening. This movie was like a fever dream. What do you me. mean, no idea what was happening? I was just like, where are we going? Like, what is the plot of this movie? Ooh, where are we going? The, like, um, when the kid shows up and he's yeah. older, I'm like, wait, what the fuck? I wait, knew it was going to be the kid. That was the one I knew. I was like, <laughs> all right, there, he's back in Beirut. The kid, the person is talking to him in English like he knows I, him. I just, Even I, if he doesn't talk in English. All right, I went, I before he spoke, I see the dude standing next to him. He keeps grabbing the... 
Arab dude who's in charge is yelling at John Hamm. And then the kid who grows up is right next to him. is like grabbing him. I'm like, stop, stop, don't do that. I'm like, oh, come on. Yeah. Seriously? There's more, but I can't. Maybe I'll rethink of it up on the on the way, you know, through this podcast. But I can't. Yeah. I can't really recall them all right now. A yeah, lot of cliches. A lot yeah. of tropes to just. And they're bad forward. cliches. It's not like, oh, yeah, this works. Yeah. This doesn't work at all for me. Like, well, it movie. works, but like. 20 years ago, we didn't see it a thousand times already. Well, um, yeah, I mean, like, now it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, uh, it's just... And, and you know what really bums me out about this is, like, I just saw John Hamm in Baby Driver, and he's fucking incredible in that movie. And it's, like, the first time a director nah, has... he wasn't good in this. He, it's a... With Baby Driver, it was, like, the first time a director actually... A film director like actually used him in a good way and he showed his range like when this movie first starts out i'm like okay you know he's okay yeah. and then it's just down fucking hell yeah. i'm like this is trash. i thought when it opened i thought okay 70s era spy thriller cool yeah. kick I, ass i wish it was set kept during that time period yeah, when he had the when it went hair, to the 80s the everybody looked like now time yeah they didn't put any effort in to make him look like well, it was the 80s that's the thing is when you first see him and he's got kind of longer side yeah, of his hair. Good. He's got sideburns. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm into this. You immediately this. know, but nobody says a date or anything. She's like, yeah. oh, okay, 70s, cool. Yeah, I was feeling it. I really liked that kind of opening Cold scene. Cold War, Middle Eastern tensions. Yeah. It's going to be, you know, it's gonna be say, let's see how this shakes out. Yeah, I shouldn't say I completely liked the opening scene. I, th I thought there were elements that were no, okay. but it, No, it, but it wasn't a perfect scene, but no. it worked. Yeah. It was an effective scene to get the... Get the plot, get yeah. the movie going. And then as soon as it cuts the, the title card of 10 years later, I'm like, oh, straight downhill. Yeah. Straight fucking downhill. He right looks off the like, cliff. He looks like a, a lifelong alcoholic. Oh, yeah. like he, In the 80s. You see the fucking Burn wrinkles the on his face, and he looks like shit. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, he's playing an alcoholic. But they just beat it over the head. Over it's not like sort of like with him, you know, like hiding the flask or casually in it the becomes corner. a part of the story too because like they he's at some bar the because the, his first night he's just goes to a bar and have some drinks and plays cards with some plo higher up who may or may not factor into the story later <laughs> yeah well i don't care about spoilers for this this movie's shit i'm gonna say whatever well, i want um what really spoilers are there there's not really any spoilers because everything that you think it's is, like fever dream <laughs> except for one thing at the end we'll hold off one thing at the end we'll clarify yeah, except right, for right. that everything is right by the numbers right by the book yeah. what you think is going to happen happens yeah and um you know i was i was actually starting to get like excited when uh when it first started because i heard like the score and it was kind of like almost this like chanting. I like, liked where Indian it was going because that was cool. But I also liked. All right, we're having a party. Go get the boy. We need him now. Right. I'm not gonna give up the kid. We're raising him. Blah blah blah. All right. I'm gonna go talk to your boss. Give me two minutes. Goes down, talks to the boss. Boom, 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 boom. Firefight. All right, cool. Yeah. Now we're getting going. Now we're moving yeah, and somewhere. Then there's, there's literally like no action scene until like the end of the movie. Yeah, after there that. was night no, like I wouldn't even count that as really an action scene. It was just like there was stakes. There was something happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most yeah, you're like right. most of the time, nothing happens in this movie. I mean, action took place, but I sort of count action as like multiple things happening. At the end, it's sort of like one guy shoots, then the next guy, then the next guy, then the next guy, yeah. and then you know. They abscond in a van. Yeah. Uh, another thing I, I want to talk about is um, this movie has, like, no downtime. Like, everyone is talking constantly. There's no yeah. room to breathe. Constant talking, constant walking and talking to the point I was just like, please stop. Well, there's a please lot of things. Stop. They're just giving us a lot of information that's not important. But, like... But how, how can that ever seep into your head? Anyone in the audience. All of that constant fucking fast... It's like... Just nonstop It's you. like they want to... They re there's. Do you remember the scene when he meets Carter in the dungeon? Yeah. And they're given the code. He has to say for the audience four times, like, "Oh yeah." Is Gaines in on this one? Do yeah. you think it's going to be a good Gaines this quarter? Make sure you remember this. Do you know sure you how many gains this. you got at the gym today? <laughs> yeah, the gain some beach. shit, man. Yeah, that. Oh, 
It was embarrassing. Let's I, now I, let's let's get into that. Go ahead, please, please. I I I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like like none of the actors in this movie I really liked at all. Like yeah. everyone really did not work for me, especially Rosamund Pike. The, she um, annoyed the fuck out of yeah, me. Yeah, she was she was bad. I'm I mean, listen, I'm not a fan of her in general. But I saw her in a movie a few months back, Hostels. I thought she was pretty good in it. You didn't but, like her in Gone Girl? No, I hated her in Gone Girl. She was the perfect bitch. Well, it, it her performance works because you fucking want it. I, yeah. I wanted Ben Affleck to bash her fucking head open. <laughs> you know it's the I mean? one movie that I like Ben Affleck. I, the one movie really? you truly, I truly like Ben Affleck. You've never liked him in anything else? Not Chasing Amy? Never seen it. Uh, seen Goodwill Hunting. Can't get over the Boston accents the whole time, and that's Matt Damon's movie anyway. So. You, you didn't like the town at all? To yeah. All of his movies, we'll what get about, back to it real quick. All of his movies I mean, that I, he directs that I've seen, he's the smartest, strongest, most intelligent character yeah. And he's well, no an matter thing, what. For sure. It's yeah. I, it's like a archetype. I get yeah. that, but maybe play play a fucking I don't know anti-hero I, or something. I, I thought Do he something. was I thought he was fantastic in the accountant, but you know, I, I like hated that. the accountant. I didn't like it. Really? I liked Jesus. the action, but that I didn't was, like. I think that was fucking great. if anyone knows this comment, is the um, final set piece in the accountant the same house as the one from the first John Wick? The first house no, action no. set piece. No, I just I saw it and I thought, wow, that looks really similar. No. All right, back to uh, Beirut. Beirut. <laughs> is it Beirut or is it Beirut? I don't Beirut. even know how to pronounce it. Yeah. Beirut. Beirut? Okay. Well, it's because I guess I didn't know this, but I guess it's like three different languages there: French, Arabic, yeah. whatever the Christians speak. Right. Coptic. Coptic. Is Coptic. it Coptic or Coptic? Oh, fuck if I don't know. I don't know. Um. Fuck. I had a train. A train to ride, but I lost it real quick. Alright, um... It's... Something that I really... I just want to see a really good spy thriller. Made after, like, 1980. <laughs> It'd be nice. I mean, I don't... I, I, would you classify this in the spy genre? Or the CIA genre? I don't, I don't CIA know. CIA genre which is a spy movie, though. Because they are spies. Yeah, I guess. Unless, of course, we're talking about, like, the internal workings. I mean, you could maybe give that bureaucratic yeah. satire. I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, this, um... I just... It, it, well, movies like this, I, I honestly just don't like at all. I, I don't like Argo. I didn't like Seven Days in the Top um, I didn't like Syriana. <laughs> I just don't like any of these movies. They never work for me, ever. Did you ever see uh, Babel? Babel? Yeah, and I didn't like that. You didn't like it? Either. Syriana, you didn't like? No, I didn't like Syriana okay. at all. I like the. I can definitely get on board with a movie where. Those are way better movies where, than this, for sure. Yeah, I can, I can, I've never Absolutely. seen them, and I can almost guarantee oh. that. Yeah. I um. keep losing my train of thought. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> um. <laughs> the guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you remember Games, who he was? Have you ever seen him in anything else? Games. Who Games about? in this movie. I don't know which guy you're talking about. The uh, bad guy boss. The bad guy boss. The hair. The one brown kind of little sideburns, kind of always talking. Yeah, I've seen him in a bunch of stuff, and I thought I think I've I seen usually him like Fargo. him. Well, he but he's he played. This. I feel like he played exactly like he plays in most movies, but the they didn't give him anything yeah. else. Like if you give him maybe. <laughs> A moment to get angry or something. He never really gets angry. He's just sort of like, he reminded "We're gonna me. do this. Yeah. Kill two birds with one stone." Yeah, yeah. The dialogue is so bad. That's why. That's why I. I it's tough to blame all the actors because the dialogue is so shit. Yeah. But yeah, he he reminded me of like Joel Edgerton and Red Sparrow. Remember when he says, "You fucked us." Yeah. <laughs> It was rough. There were so many lines like that where you're just when, like... at the end they're doing they're they may be going to a Awful. meet to trade. We're right in the middle of the trade. Yeah. And they cut back to the office. Are you kidding me? It's, it's schizophrenic, man. This the is the editing. most this it's is the crazy. best this is the climax of the movie. You just all right, let's go back let's go over here they, for a little they bit. They undercut the tension yeah. constantly. I was know? gonna say, um they the don't... audience did that to us, but the filmmakers oh, did that I, did that themselves. I'll be honest with you. If I was watching this at home, I would have felt the same way. Yeah, I would me have been too. Miserable. But they were annoying. 
There was many. There was these people right next to us. This, I don't. They, they were just very old people. They weren't who, that old. They were middle know, aged, no, right? No, no, no they super were old. Super wrinkly old women. Oh, I feel bad yeah. then. No, yeah. I um insulted them in the theater. I said um. We did become assholes at one point because yeah. we were very frustrated. Well, it's just every time any there was just any little random thing. <laughs> oh, that's a gun! Why don't yeah. you shoot him? Yeah, she was she was um literally just describing things that were in the movie. Like Marv Albert, <laughs> man. Oh my God! Well, what is that? I wanted to oh, say dear bite Lord. my ass to her. <laughs> I want to say bite my ass to her. <laughs> Marv Albert slam. <laughs> Back on board the uh, Rudy Land train. Um, the Beirut train. Yeah, when it first started, were people shushing us during the previews? I, I don't know if they were shushing, because there was one lady in the group who was like, I'm pretty sure she was shushing her the people in her group. Oh, okay. Because there was four of them. But anyways, after that, whatever. <laughs> the movie starts dead silence. I'm like, oh, it's an R-rated adult sort of themed movie. Yeah. It, the theater was packed. And I had, a lot I had thought yeah. about this contingency. It's, it's Saturday night, Saturday evening. Yes. This is the only movie for adults, specifically. Yes. And it's not really for adults, once you see it. No. I, but, I don't know who this is for, honestly, really. I don't. Because I don't know why. I, don't know. If I mean, do you think anybody in there like this? Uh, maybe. The girl, the John Hamm ladies, they fucking... Yeah. Anytime he said a joke, they would yeah. smirk and laugh. Anytime anybody else did. Yeah, there's nothing funny in this movie at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, other than... Just cringe-inducing, filmmaking. awful dialogue. And yeah. terrible written dialogue. And bad camera work, let's say. Yeah. Did you uh, want to talk about any spoilers or anything? How the movie ends or whatever? Because this movie ends randomly. Just yeah. straight up, like, cuts. It's okay. like, oh, hey, here's a picture of the American flag. Goodbye. <laughs> they try to make it artsy at the end. I'm talking before the climax. Spoilers, blah, 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 blah. Oh, fuck off. Man. Yeah, okay. Shit. The, um, at the end, they're tr- essentially the movie is the kid who he adopted in Beirut in the 70s has grown up. He's a terrorist now. He's a bad boy with a bad boy image. And a bad brother. Yeah. And a bad brother. He believes the Israelis have his brother. It's all so about he, family. He kidnaps the CIA <laughs> attache, Carter, and then he demands that only John Hamm, who is in America and, you know, working for unions and stuff, mediating unions and stuff, to come and uh, broker a deal. He wants for. Carter to be released. He wants his brother, and he wants to hug him now. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the weird thing is, is that they never tell him that his friend is the one who's kidnapped, and he goes to Beirut anyway. Why yeah. does he even go in the first place? Yeah. There's no incentive for him to go. I mean, sixty-five hundred dollars. Oh boy. Even in the eighties, and go buy a car. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. I mean, he's got nothing. Is is is? I guess you know, his wife's dead. He's miserable at his job. I don't know, but why he said, "Oh, I would fucking never go back to Beirut. You could never get me back." The guy who who um, the guy who propositioned him was in the Night Manager. Yeah, he was in Red Sparrow too. Red Sparrow too. Yeah, I I noticed that immediately. I was like, "Oh wow, this is." Why did they get him? Why did both movies? Why did they get him? If only casting director, maybe a quarter of a scene, a quarter, you know, just a small segment. Just weird. He's not great, but he's yeah, he's a solid actor, I guess. He would have been better in the role than Dean Norris is. Yeah, Dean Norris. Dean Norris, was he supposed to be Jewish or something? Because he kept trying to do an accent randomly. It was very weird. It was kind of... His hair, I thought, was okay. He looked He looked great. Yeah, I didn't recognize him. As soon as he opened his mouth, like, wait, is that you, Dean? (laughs) Is that you, uh, glob face from Total Recall? I didn't know that he was in this movie. And then when I I saw his his name pop up, I immediately pointed to the screen to you. I was like, yeah! Fucking Dean I, Norris. Watched, I watched Total I Recall excited. yesterday, and I watched Breaking Bad earlier today. It's so funny; like he does not age. He looks exactly the same, like twenty, like thirty years ago. I forget. <laughs> He's like either almost a year or two or three older than Casper Van Dien, yeah. or two or three younger. 
in uh, <laughs> yeah, <it's funny>. Starship <laughs> Troopers. Right. He plays his yeah. his fucking teacher. Yeah. He looks fucking fifty in the nineties. He's a good actor looks, though. Yeah, he is. Fucking he's, better actor than Casper Van Dien. I'll yeah, tell you that. Yeah, of course he is. He's shit in this movie though. He's not good in this. Yeah, it was bad. <laughs> What was he going for? I don't know, man. I'll tell you, the, the director, I think he just let these fucking guys go, man. I don't think he he did anything. I don't think he gave any direction for these actors at all. Yeah, but you figure, <laughs> oh, even Jesus. if with a shitty script, you figure at least one actor is going to be like, all right, I'll at least make my part good. <laughs> well, I'll a, at least look good. That's a crazy thing. It's like Tony Gilroy wrote this, and, um, you know, Tony Gilroy is a pretty good writer. I know his name. What else? Well, uh, Dan Gilroy is his brother who did Nightcrawler. Okay. So, you know, these guys are just pretty good writers, but... Usually he directs his work. So Do you this think was... it's genetic? No. Is I don't know. Is uh, English acumen <laughs> hereditary? I guess so. <laughs> what else says uh... so Tony Gilroy? Terrible. Just he. Uh, it was very just cliche. That's all. I, yeah. I can't even remember it. Just my... Most of it. No, you know. It's, it's it's all slips right. Just uh, my was, my mind is like PTSD. I had, just trying I had to my hopes up all. from the beginning, and because yeah. so far we're on this four or five day odyssey, we're zero for four on movies. Uh, I mean, listen, I had fun with Truth or Dare. Like, I yeah, it was fun, fun, but fun would you say it was a, a good movie though? It was a better movie than this. I movie. go to the movies <laughs> to see good movies. You heard? Yeah. Well, you heard? Yeah, well, you're the one who picked this one. I wanted. I saw the trailer for well, this. Well, you said you read it was like getting good buzz. It was. It did. This has How like an this 80 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, dude. Like that blows my fucking mind. How did this get any? This Ooh. is why. This is what I just said last episode. I don't fucking trust critics. How the fuck can you trust critics when you watch a piece of shit? See, like this, this is why I like. Um, Jesus. you got to find a certain critic. I really liked when. Uh, yeah. What's his name was alive? The fat guy. Roger Ebert. Yeah, Roger Ebert. Yeah, I, like, I didn't um, always. I obviously I didn't always agree with him, yeah, absolutely, but I could sure. at least I knew that he was giving me his honest opinion. He, he respected his opinion. Exactly, I knew he yeah. knew what he was talking. That's about. um, that's how I feel about Richard Roper. I yeah. like Richard Roper, but I disagree with him on a lot of things, and that's okay. But yeah. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I'll tell you, like, jeez. What like, did he say? This was good. No, no, okay. I, I I don't know. I mean. I, You're just yeah, we're just talking about yeah, that. It comes there's certain that. there's just certain guys I've always looked at like Michael Phillips and A.O. Scott, which I think they're kind of pretentious assholes. Yeah. But they do know a lot about film. But um, yeah, the, the whole aggregate score shit, <laughs> man, that shit fucking burns you because this is trash. Yeah. This is trash. This is like this is the same way I felt about the posts. Like I'm like, what the fuck is this? How is anybody just like saying this is good? Well, this I didn't feel this bad about Shape of Water. I had a little bit of high hopes, but because I'm like, I right, mean, spy movie, but it started with, out pretty with Shape poorly. of Water. You look at it, you're like, okay, well, this is well filmed. Like this yeah, is good cinematography. You have a great score. Michael Shannon's fucking great in that. Yeah. Um, you know, there's great set design. But there's, still, it's like the entire point of the movie is a lady doing it with a fish god monster. Yeah, but that's, it's, I mean... In love with a fish god monster. It's still, it's still infinitely better yeah, and more talented it's, than this. this it's better nothing. than this. Like, there's yeah. no vision here. There's no nothing. It's just whatever. Bland. Yeah. That's shit. You want to give final ratings on this one? Yeah. Um, there's nothing more to say, you know? He didn't see it, but just, like, there would be... It would be humor point, a quippy one-liner, or... I would don't want to say that. I wouldn't want to give him that much credit. A uh, meant to be humorous line. Then a scene later, we're talking about car bombings. And then the next scene, Rosemont Pike and what's his name, John Hammer, pretty flirty together or something. You know what I mean? It's just that was like out of nowhere for me. Yeah. I was like, what is going on? One minute she's got a gun ready to shoot him in the fucking head because he's got it, some liquor. And then the next minute, like, they're in the car laughing together. Like, what the fuck's going on here? That's what I mean when I yeah. say tonally all over the Yeah, place. yeah. No, um, I, I can see that now that I'm thinking All the about dialogue, it. all the... But that that's like an editing thing. Like, just terrible editing. Yeah. Because that should not be in the movie then. So. Terrible editing. We, we found... We've discovered... We prognosed this film. <laughs> Bad editing. Acting was... Bad. Yeah. Nobody really gave a shit. Cinematography bad. Because the most they were given shit. The dialogue was fucking trash. Yeah, yeah. Cinematography wasn't wasn't good. Yeah. 
I would give this movie a I'd give it a four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't. I just. I really, really hated this movie on every level, and I just think it's garbage filmmaking. Um, you know, I it probably should get a three, but no, nah, I'm giving it a two. I think this is absolute trash. Like, I did like, you have any expectations for this at all? No, no. I, I saw the, from the I saw the trailer, and I was like, I never want to see this movie. Yeah, and. You know, it's just garbage. Hated it. Two out of ten. I'm much more lenient than you. That's what I found. <laughs> well, you know, I just... No, nah, I don't think so. You're more critical. On the ratings, I'm much more lenient. I don't, I don't think so. I give Game Night a 7 out of 10, and that's not an 8 out of 10. <laughs> You're always lower, dude. <laughs> You're always lower. Uh, I guess so. For the most so. part. Nah. So, um, this, 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 I mean, honestly, like, really, you, you, like, how many passes can you give? Like, man. like, what? It's in focus? Is that, is that what we're giving this? A below average? This is and not there was, below, this is way below. There was average. a bunch of times this is where shit. there wasn't really, there was a moment where it wasn't in focus. I mean, listen, you, you just said, like, bad acting, bad cinematography, bad editing. How many fucking bad things have to be in this for it to be below average? Hey. Like, this is no this real is trash. plot. No real plot. Right, exactly. Too. This is shit, man. Maybe I should give it a three, but fuck, man. I hate it. In a bad time, you hated it, you hated yeah. it. Fucking hate Are it. there any sort of comparable I- film ideas you could recommend for our viewers? Sort of nah. action y, covert, <sighs> Middle Eastern thriller. I, I don't like this genre at all. The whole Middle Eastern movie thing. It's I, I remember when I saw Body of Lies here, which is like, okay. I didn't mind Body of Lies. Yeah, it's, I it's, think it's I got long. it. It's on Netflix yeah. right now. I wanted to revisit it, but yeah. This, when I the just movie's don't, long, you don't feel like it. I mean, I love Black Hawk Down, uh, which is uh, a really good movie, but not really the same. Area no, not though. not really the same thing. It's a war movie. Well, um, also it's Africa. Yeah, yeah I was going to say it's Africa, but just like I, I don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't think I've ever liked any Middle Eastern movie. It's not really. Give me. So, have you ever seen uh, Midnight Run? Is that good? I haven't seen it yet. Midnight Run with. Robert Not Midnight Arrow? Run, uh, the one Oliver Stone wrote. Uh, Midnight Express. Midnight Express. I've talked about that. That's a Turkish prison movie. That's yeah. Not a... mm, that's, yeah, you're right. That's... I'm th- I'm just yeah. I'm reaching grasping at straws. Yeah, it takes no. place in the Middle East. I saw yeah. Kite Runner. It was okay. Yeah. Super depressing though. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I anytime you bring in um, little boy dancer. Little dancing boys, I um, I uh, check out. Yeah, I just I, like say like and the, and these are like the Oscar bait movies, and this obviously it, it came out at a, at a time where it's clearly not. Because um, they knew it was trash. Nothing yeah. else is out. Like I said, this is the only this seven days on a time adult looking themed movie. Just awful. I can't. I'm trying to think of another sort of Middle Eastern spy movie. Did was there ever any um? Whatchamacallit? I mean, the night manager. I could grasp it. That's... Yeah, the night manager is uh It's not solid. great, but it's it's good. Yeah, it's solid. It's um, yeah, I wouldn't... I don't think I'd watch it again. If the once was enough. It's a long kind of miniseries. Was there ever a... um? Who's the guy who wrote uh, Clear and Present Danger? Did he ever do a Middle Eastern movie? Or did they ever do a Middle Eastern movie based I, on I his books? I don't like Clear and Present Danger. I like nah. Patriot Games. I like Patriot Games better, but it's just, I, that's the first one I thought of. Yeah, Clear and Present Danger is more of a kind of more overseas Middle Eastern movie. I mean, I don't Clear know. Clear and Present Danger is about uh, South American drug lords. Yeah, whatever. I don't fucking care. I hate that movie. Like Seriously? All the scenes in the CIA office are fucking terrible. It's so boring and shitty. It's it is. It's very slow. I'll, get, I'll grant you that. Patriot Games is, very is slow just a movie. good action movie with Sean Bean. In it. It's like way better. It's Pretty rated. solid. It's good. How about that? Yeah, Patriot Games. They uh, were training with Liberians and stuff. Yeah, it's, like, it's a terrorist movie, I guess. You know? Yeah, Patriot Games. That's our uh, recommendation for <laughs> yeah. a better movie to watch about not really Middle Eastern politics or Middle Eastern no, relations, it's, it's but... It's more of an action movie, just... Just Jack Ryan, it actually. deals with the IRA. Yeah. Old, old Jackie Ryan has uh, 
as a run-in with the old... The only good Jack the Ryan old movie. The old Sinn Féin. You don't like... Uh, you've told me this before. You don't like don't the uh, submarine movie? Yeah, and uh, the Ben Affleck. I never saw it. You never saw it? Some of all fears. No. Nah. I literally... I remember my dad liked it, and I like fell asleep and missed the whole third act, which was like an act, like I, action I've, set piece. Like I've gone stuff. over many times, I'm not... I, there's something about Ben Affleck. He's just not His early compelling. stuff, he's, he just was not good, but I think he's had some good stuff. Of, he's know, better than he was years. when he was younger, for sure. Yeah. Um. Patriot Games. What else did we just say? Clear and present danger. What, did you, what didn't you like about the submarine movie? And then we'll uh, let these people go. <laughs> Uh, Hunt for Red October. Hunt for Red October. Once again, I just I just think it's a boring movie. I'm not into the submarine movies, well, Crimson Tide. Yeah, sometimes the Crimson Tide was bad. It was cheesy. Um, well, sometimes a movie like that, it has to be a slow pace because like we're dealing with yeah. geopolitics. It moves at a slow pace. Yeah, you know? I'm I'm fine with slower placed movies. I just it's just stuck in this one location and yeah. I'm just fucking bored. Like I, it's not interesting to me. Like, I, <laughs> You know, I, can, I can understand that. Certain movies, you know, you can take place in one location and it's fine, but it's just like... I mean, I, I've never seen Das Boot. I've heard that's really it's, good. It's superb. Yeah. I got it. I uh, I got to get around to that one. There is a, uh, a submarine movie that I did really, really like a few U571? years ago. U571? No. <laughs> U571. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, no, Black Sea. It had uh, Ben Mendelsohn in it and Jude Law. It was really, Didn't see it. really fucking good. I like that a lot. Did you see the one with Harrison Ford where he's Russian? K-19. It's about the leak. It's garbage. Okay. That's the movie that got Catherine Bigelow fucking like blacklisted for like 10 years. Seriously? Yeah. Like like that movie was such a gigantic flop. That she I didn't was, realize like, she did it. Yeah, she did it. And she was like, it was such a flop that like she didn't like it. It's a really great story anything. though. Like it's, till, uh, I saw um, PBS story about it. Didn't that and U five seven one come out like the same year? They were like those two submarine movies. Or I don't know if they came out the same year, but around yeah. the same time at least. Yeah, it was like two of them. There were people were like, oh, one's bullshit, one's not. Yeah. Yeah. It was very. The story about the Russian one is very interesting. There was this leak on a submarine, and like that's very compelling. Now we have to deal yeah. with it. Either we all die, or we do something about it. Harrison Ford at that time. Well, yeah, Harrison so, Ford wasn't a good call with a Russian accent, in. man. That was a bad <laughs> Harrison move. Harrison Ford giving an accent. Yikes. All right, guys. Um, My co-host wish, wishes uh, Alec Baldwin dead and as happy Sean Connery is. May he, um, may he redeem, repent his sins somehow. Thank you.